Welcome back to Money Magazine. Having your medical checkups at home and uploading them to your doctor will soon become the norm. Not only that, Melissa Hekalea reports you could see a future where you can store your own spare parts. Genetic testing used to be the territory of crime solving or scientific lab testing. Today, technology has made it accessible and affordable enough for the average person to use it. This is something that the doctors, physicians can use as an added uh, clinical tool. And this tool is actually extremely valuable because this is genomic, genetic makeup. Pharmacogenomic testing shows how an individual metabolizes medications. Dr. Ong, who offers this test to some of her patients, said one patient taking psychiatric medication discovered she was on a number of drugs she should avoid. She was saying that I'm going to give this report in the next few minutes to my psychiatrist mm -hmm. so that uh, in the future, if anything needs to be altered or added, uh, you know, the physician knows best what to do. Danny Young's company offers similar DNA testing. He says knowing how different patients react to different drugs is crucial to prescribing the best drug for their condition. He cites U.S. statistics to make his point. Every year there's two point, over 2.2 million adverse drug reactions that happens to patients that are taking normal prescription drugs. Um, at the same time, it's the fourth leading cause of deaths with over 100,000 people die annually in the USA, and this is with properly prescribed drugs. Healthcare today is transforming as technology is making it easier and more affordable for treatment to be tailor-made to each individual. Ten years ago, the test would have cost 200,000 U.S. dollars. Today, it costs less than 500 U.S. dollars. The test requires a simple swabbing of your saliva. From there, it gets sent to the lab. So this is what happened to my swab when I gave it in? Yes, that's right. Okay. So for each um, sample, mm -hmm. we'll dilute the cells into the tube. I see. And then put the tube into the machines. So the machines will help us to extract, to open the cell and elute the DNA from the cells. From there, the sample gets tested against various agents to see how the DNA reacts. How many drugs are you testing for per mm -hmm. person? At the moment, we focus on uh, five to seven panels. Mm -hmm. It consists of around 100 drugs okay. uh, in the panels. Test results are ready in 48 hours. We are also working on a test for targeted cancer therapies. So on top of chronic illness, we want to make sure cancer patients are taking the right medication because a lot of times chemotherapy is not the best method. Paired with a test is an app where patients can store and share their results with family members or physicians. He says he plans on rolling out the testing to the rest of the region. We are talking to multiple insurance companies around the region mm -hmm. um, you know, for basically incorporating our tests into part of their coverage um, because ultimately will uh, enhance patient, better patient care on an individual basis. The head of the biomedical cluster at the Hong Kong Science and Technology Park says this is part of the preventative medical trend he associates with advances in science, technology and the proliferation of smart devices. We're integrating electronics, uh, ICT, that is the Internet of Things, uh, on devices that would help us to detect things that we were unable to do so previously. And that saves lives. Daniel sees a future where the personal health system will be similar to our personal banking system, which raises flags when we travel or are overdrawn. The system itself will pose a question, hey, have you been eating uh, healthily or have you been sleeping adequately? This test, paired with an app, can tell if you're predisposed to diabetes, a growing problem in Asia. People who are young, who are not obese, who are not you know, weight, uh, overweight, they also are in, you know, uh, incurring those diseases too. How does this work exactly? I put my saliva in here? Yes, you give a really, really wet kiss. <laughs> okay, here it goes. Let's check my blood sugar level. When you're ready with your t to take your capture your test results, 
you bring up the apps okay. and uh, you click on the camera icon. This is your perfect score. <laughs> nice. A perfect score. I yeah, like the perfect score, right. So no diabetes yet. It doesn't show that risk yet. Okay. We're not doctors. <laughs> we can't okay. tell you that. The kit costs less than 10 Hong Kong dollars. The home health care market is currently valued at almost 230 billion U.S. dollars worldwide and is forecast to reach 350 billion by 2020. Investors have taken note and are anxious to get products into the market. This is one of the world's first miniature hearts and it was created here in Hong Kong. It might not look like much, but it has all the key functionalities of a human heart, and it could be the first step in making your own personal mini-me. The heart has been 15 years in the making. It only takes 2.5 milliliters of blood to create. We have developed our technology basically to instruct uh, this various unique stem cell type to become heart cells. One of his goals for the mini heart is to use them to replace human subjects in drug testing. With these bio-artificial hearts and organs, uh, we can therefore revolutionize the process of drug discovery so we're no longer testing like one at a time. As you can imagine, we can be testing thousands or hundreds of thousands of small molecules at a time. He adds that other colleagues are already creating other miniature organs. So what we've been working on at the moment is to uh, join forces with our other colleagues to try to create a uh, mini human system with a bio-artificial heart paired together with bio-artificial bio liver, pancreas, so circulate, cir circulations, etc. His other goal is to grow a prototype to replace individual parts of the heart. The idea is to really come up with, for instance, kind of like a cardiac band-aid uh, approach so that when the heart is broken, we fix it early, very early on so that it won't get worse. He figures the timeline for growing a prototype would be similar to the mini heart, six months with an extended shelf life. In the longer term, I'm a strong believer of having libraries about artificial organs sitting around in the incubator ready for uh, transplantation so patients don't have to wait for donors. Does this mean I'll live forever if I get all my organs patched up in one place? We'll live longer, that's for sure, and that's the beauty, or that's the whole okay. point of you know, medical health care.